so I'm going to put a chain up to make sure you don't get too close and burn hey, your Why don't you go to the front with the kids up? There is a two-sided area where you will be able to see what we are going to learn about next, so more space back here, especially for taller folks. So what we need to do, once we have collected our sap, we have to remove that extra water. And that extra water, the easiest way to remove it well, there's two easy ways. One is to let the sap freeze and then just throw out the ice because that will leave behind the sugar. And you can condense it a lot faster that way. But to really finish it off into your syrup, what you have to do is add heat. And you make water vapor leave your sugar solution behind. Works really well, but you're also going to want to know that if you try this at home, you might have noticed that sign over there that tells you that for that one dark container there that's a gallon, you need to boil 40 gallons, 40 clear containers there, uh, of sap. So that's a lot of water vapor, condensation, evaporation, precipitation. You guys will peel the wallpaper off your house if you try this on the inside. Try it outside, okay? Um, it also tells you a couple of answers you guys might have been wondering about. First one, does it make a difference what kind of maple I tap? Well, yes. The reason everybody likes sugar maples is because sugar maples tend to have more sugar in their sap. They can have 2 to 3% sugar solution in their sap, which is how you get the 40 gallons to 1 ratio. Actually, it's about 43. If you have a lesser sugar solution sap, like from a silver maple, that might be a 1% solution. You'll have to boil 86 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. So yes, it makes a difference. That's like a fuel efficient car versus a gas guzzler. And that's really literal because this does need fuel. There's a fire underneath. You might have noticed all the wood back here behind us. So it takes a lot of fuel for it. Yes. How do we know a sugar maple? The sugar maple, I actually, let me hand you one of those slips. It can really make a difference in the leaf shape and what the buds look like and also sometimes the bark. Um, I can share that uh, sheet of information with you in a little bit. But um, they tend to have the smoother gray bark. They have a nice compact bud. And in the fall, they're the ones that are turning yellow and not red. So we have our sap that we've collected. Right here, we put it in our holding tank that holds about 180 gallons. It'll flow down through this tube into this very recent invention, invented back around the American Civil War. It's called an evaporator. And it's different from a kettle in the fact that it's more efficient in heating up our sap. It's efficient because there is a fire arch underneath. There's a lot of surface area in the pan, and then there's also deep fins that increase our surface area, reaching the fire below. Increasing the surface area reduces your cooking time, which is going to affect your um, product in the very end. And that's because you have to heat it um, until you get 66% sugar solution, which is your syrup. Um, what we do end up with based on how long we're cooking it is a difference in color, which is something you will notice if you take a look at the labels at the store. So it's a grading scale based on uh, your product. How many of you guys have made cookies before? Yeah. And the longer you cook your cookies, the darker they get, right? Yes. So the more heat, the darker your product. Well, that's true for our sugar maples too, or our, I'm sorry, our, our uh, maple sugar, because we take our product here, Put it in the clear container and compare it through this window of our grading scale. True all across the United States, the different colors you see relate directly to the number or the letter that they're given. It has the most sugar, the least cooking time, the most delicate flavor. It's not something you're necessarily going to find on the store shelves because they're probably going to use it to make candy. When you get all the way down to the other end of the scale, the darkest color is a B. And that dark one is going to have a lot of flavor, be very robust. You'll want to maybe use it in barbecue sauce recipes. In between are the lighter A's, a medium amber and a dark amber A. 
And those are going to be great on your pancakes, but it's really all relative. And that's how you guys will determine for yourselves with your taste test. Oh, well, what did that oh, yeah. say at the beginning? I came here for the free taste test. <laughs> Just like the sap that you guys got to taste on the back of your hand, this syrup right here, it's not syrup we have made. We don't make enough to sell it. Um, we do give our syrup that we've made out to our very happy volunteers. So, <laughs> um, so what we do have though for sale is made locally over in uh, Mason. Just yeah. up the road, 96 uh, sugar bush supply, and it's the same stuff we're selling right there that you're going to sample right here. I will come to you if you have your hand out for a handout. Thank you. Mm. That's good Careful stuff. You. Wait your turn. Thank you. Well, yes. <laughs> I you a lot, sorry. Let's see what Barb says. <laughs> I'll come around to you guys, so I'm going to vote. I caught that smile. And don't go anywhere. I hate to see that photo. That was pretty good. No, that's not a photo. It's a movie. It's a video. It's like taking a video. I want to take a picture.